and one on the other, so that his hands remained steady till sunset. And Joshua mowed down Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
told his disciples a parable about the necessity for them to pray always without becoming weary. He said, there was a judge in a certain town who neither feared God nor respected any human being. And a widow in that town used to come to him and say, Render a just decision for me against my adversary. For a long time the judge was unwilling, but eventually he thought, While it is true that I neither fear God nor respect any human being, because this widow keeps bothering me, I shall deliver a just decision for her lest she finally come and distract me. The Lord said, Pay attention to what the dishonest judge says. Will not God then secure the right of his chosen ones who call out to them day and night? Will he be slow to answer them? I tell you, you will see to it that justice is done for them speedily. But when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord. Sometimes we forget. One does not 
we are. In the world, we are in a spiritual battle. And that spiritual battle, my brothers and sisters, we can only defeat the power of darkness, the power of evil, by prayer. By prayer. If you are praying, and then when you are praying, something happened, and then not, you feel discouraged, you why should I continue praying? Why? No. Prayer is the nourishment of our soul. It's the fuel of our spiritual life. It's the fuel. Moses prayed for people who are threatened by their enemies. However, there comes a point when he needs others to help him to pray. To help him to pray. As he lifts his arms in prayer, they grow heavy and drop, and two of his assistants have to walk up his arms and so that he can continue to pray. It reminds me that we often need others to pray, to help us pray. I need someone to pray for me. You need someone to pray for you. As a community of believers, as brothers and sisters, we need to pray for each other, to seek for each other. Say somebody, I'm praying for you. Know that you are in my prayer. Sometimes we need others to do the praying for us. You may find yourself in a very in a situation, in a situation. You may be in a, a emotional state, a psychological state, of a physical, mentally. You don't know what to do. You don't even have a desire to pray. You don't feel like praying. You don't feel like coming to God. You don't feel like kneeling. You don't feel like spending a, a five minutes in prayer. And sometimes you feel discouraged. You feel weary. You are afraid. And you don't see the need of prayer. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters. It's like the person you are praying for. Even though he is not, he or she is not praying. By your prayer, his hands is like that before the Lord. It is said his hands are lifted up before the Lord. That's what your prayer does. The same way with Moses. When he was tired. And people put something under his hands. To keep on going, to keep on praying. To keep on praying. We have to be persistent. And we have to pray with conviction, with faith and determination. But sometimes, my friends, our, our prayer is like selfish prayer. Sometimes we are selfish even in our prayer. We think that we are the only one that exists in this world. We think that God doesn't have anyone else, anyone else to take care of. Sometimes you have to say to yourself, you have to say to ourselves, you know what? It's not my own thing. I'm not the only one. God is not taking care of me right now. Why? God is always taking care of us. Because God never departed from us. It is us who are departing from God. But God never goes anywhere. God always there. God always there for us. When we cannot pray ourselves, we can be supported spiritually by the prayers of others for us. It is as if they are holding us our arms as we grow weary. 
when our prayer falters, it is a great comfort to know that we have friends, we have family, we have uh, people in our community praying for us. We can never underestimate the power of prayer in our own lives. For Francis once said that prayer is the breath that gives life to faith. Yet prayer doesn't always come easy to us. Perhaps one of the reasons that we sometimes struggle to pray is that our prayer seems to go unanswered. We lose hearts. Jesus was very aware that this can happen to us. This can happen to us. We imagine when Jesus was in agony. He was in agony. He asked the disciples to keep on praying. And while Jesus, you know, was praying, and when he came back, he found them sleeping. Jesus told them, wake up! Wake up! Keep on praying, the enemy is close! Wake up! The Christian is always someone who is always in prayer. Prayer means in relationship, in communication with God, in communication with the Father. We always keep our eyes open, our minds. When we come to prayer before the Lord, we need to come with all our being, with an open heart, an open mind. Open mind to do the will of God. Sometimes when it is not what we need, what we come to the Lord, what we come to ask the Lord, that we will find. Sometimes you have to put in your mind the heart that the will of God must be done in my life. Sometimes you are praying for something, but you have to leave warm space for God to take control, for God to know if it is good for you, if it is good for me. You have to be open to the will of God, to the will of the Father. Yes, even sometimes it's hard to swallow the will of God. It is hard. Because this is what I want. But you know, you have to let God be God. You have to abandon in the hands of the Father. The same way Jesus abandoned himself totally, totally in the hands of his Father because he knows that his Father loved him. And when we come before the Lord, we come not just to ask him for something. We come, we pray to go deeper, deeper, deeper in love with the Father. Because two good friends in the communication, in the spending time, they go deeper and they know each other better. When we spend time in prayer with God, we know God better. We accept the will of God better in our lives. We don't have to force to have faith to accept the will of God, to believe in God. We have to know God knows better than I, better than we do. My brothers and sisters, the judge had to be worn down before he granted the justice. God, however, in, in the words of Jesus, will see justice done to his chosen who cry to him day and night. And even when he delays to have done. Our attitude, my friends, in prayer is one of waiting and persevering watchfulness. Our cries are based on the promise of Jesus that the presence of the Holy Spirit and the presence of the Holy Spirit Jesus the Savior is already there. It is about turning to Him and remaining with an open heart and hands before the Lord to know that God will not let you go with empty hands. To know that God will always answer our prayer, but we have to, have to be patient. We have 
to persevere. We have to make our request before the Lord with an open heart, open mind. We can always dispose ourselves to prayer to do what depends on us to join the will of our Father. Then when we see the Holy Spirit who keeps us in power, keep us in poverty of hearts, with a humble heart to remain open to the gifts that comes. Our expectation is a meeting whose conditions do not depend on us. A humble of hearts is the condition of persevering prayer that spiritual fruit of this persever perseverance. Jesus gave us an ex as an example the parable of a poor widow who needed his justice to settle her affair. She holds on. She is tenacious. She will not give up. How many times you and I, you and I give up. You and I say, I'm not going to pray. Why should I come to church? Why should I spend time before the blessed? Why? There have been a long time I've been praying. I've been doing nothing at the window. Why? And this lady tells us today, do not give up on God. Do not give up on yourself. Do not give up on each other. Do not give up on prayer. Keep on praying. Keep on praying, my brothers and sisters, and you will see the glow, the power of God shining through your life. Keep on walking with the Lord. Keep on trusting. Keep on, keep on believing in Him. The trust of the little ones and the poor is the best attitude prayer toward God. The harvest is abundant and the workers are few. We must enter into the love of God who save us. I tell you, He will do them justice very quickly. Yes, my friends, the Lord always stands by the side of those who are suffering, those who are knocking, those who are asking, those who are waiting patiently. And you will see our God is God. And after him, there is no other. Our God is God alone. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>